Hi, I'm Jeremy Lickness with Deep Sky Workflows, and in this video, I'm going to show you how this cube allows you to take a ordinary camera and make deep sky photographs using incredibly long exposures. Let's check it out. I love taking pictures with cameras, whether it's a wide-angle view of the Orion constellation and neighboring stars, a Milky Way landscape, a starry sky, or even zooming in on a nebula. If you've worked with camera photography, not using a telescope, you know that exposure time is key, but there's a problem. This is a two-minute exposure that I took with the Sony camera. And although it doesn't look too bad at a distance, all we need to do is zoom in. We can see the extreme star trails that we left behind. So let's look at another exposure taken with the same camera, only this time using the Star Adventurer. If we zoom in this time, we can see the stars are pretty much dots. The solution I decided to go with is called the Star Adventurer Mini, or SAM for short. There is a Star Adventurer that is a larger model. I chose this as a more compact model so that I can take it with me more easily when I travel. I got the Pro Pack and there's different components in the different packs. So what you get based on what you buy may not be the exact same. They all have the cube in common, but let's talk about what I received with the package that I got. There's the equatorial wedge, and this is really the key part of the entire system because this is what angles your camera into the right plane so that it can track the stars, and we'll talk more about that. There's a declination bracket, which allows some fine-tune adjustments. There's the main Skywatcher cube itself, which is Wi-Fi enabled, so you can connect to it and run applications. There's a ball mount adapter, and there's the polar scope, and we'll talk about how that's used. When these are all assembled together, this is one example, one configuration, and I'm gonna show you the multiple configurations that are available. Now, the way it works is relatively straightforward. We know that the stars are rotating due to the Earth's rotation in the sky, and it's that movement that creates star trails. So what <clears throat> the Skywatcher does is the equatorial mount allows you to adjust the system to an angle that matches the North Star, and that becomes the center. Then the equipment that's hanging off of it can be further tilted to capture the purple star in this case. But it's important to note that that angle is now relative to the polar star so that when the sky cube or the uh, star adventurer cube is added, it rotates in that exact same plane and it does it at the right rate, which is called <clears throat> sidereal, that tracks the stars. Basically it's moving at the exact same speed as the stars.
Now that the SAM's configured, we can start to use it. It has a couple ports. One of the ports is a snap port. This is a special cable that you can get that connects the SAM to your camera and allows it to control your camera for things like large exposures and uh, interval snapshots. So it'll control that. And you'll see more what I mean when I jump into the software. The SAM unit itself is capable of running off of a micro USB cable. So you can use this to attach it to your laptop or a power source. I like to use a power brick and power it so that I know it has plenty of power. But it also accepts AA batteries. This is the batteries installed. It's two AA batteries. They last quite a long time. And you can see here also the indicator lights. There's a power indicator for when I power the unit on. And there's a Wi-Fi indicator for when it's connected. The Wi-Fi on this unit is pretty unique because you have two options. You can use access point mode, which allows you when you're in the field to set it up as its own hotspot and attach to it with your control software. Or you can do station mode and have it on your own wireless. So when you're around the house, you can connect to it from pretty much anything. Let's take a look at the software. In the software, you've got a few options. You can go into your settings and set up your Wi-Fi, your location, etc. I'm going to talk about this polar clock utility in a minute. Manual control allows you to manually move the motor. This is actually very useful if you're setting up a time lapse and you want to figure out the angle that the time lapse should uh, rotate through. This tells you the angle and then there's a little reset to zero it out. And then you just move and track that angle and figure out the right amount. Going from the top to the bottom, astrophotography is my main reason for getting this unit. And this is where you basically set up the length of an exposure, how long to wait between exposures, how many photos you want to take, this is sidereal, which is the rate of stars, but you can also do lunar and solar tracking and some other speeds. Dithering slowly moves or wiggles the uh, rotation slightly just to bring out more detail in pictures. And to conserve battery, you can turn Wi-Fi off while it's taking a picture. Now, I'm gonna share my first uh, big tip with this unit and that you may not want to use the built-in software to take pictures for you. Chances are you have your own software for imaging. And in that case, you want the motor to be running so that you're tracking stars, but you're not using the software. So how do you do that? The way that I do it is pretty simple. I come in here and do an incredibly long exposure. You can see this is 138 hours. And I just click Run and have that snap cable detached. So this isn't controlling my camera, but this long exposure means the motor's running and then my other software can take advantage of that tracking. Now I do recommend that you install the declination bracket for fine tuning your targets when you're using this. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next.
Continuing on, we've got Astro Time Lapse. This is a really cool feature. What it does is it tracks your image. So here you can see I have a 120 second exposure. But I can tell it to do these exposures over, let's say, a two hour period. And I want to end up with a video that is a certain length long. And based on the exposure time in the video span, here you can see we've got a two second video. So if I took this down to 60 second exposures, but here's what's unique about this. After each exposure, it resets to the beginning location. So the landscape remains fixed while the star field moves, but is exposed well enough to bring out detail. Let's see what that looks like. Next we have regular and long exposure time lapse. These are pretty much the same. Long exposure is just something you'd use in the evening and uh, do a little bit longer exposure to let light in. Regular time lapse lets you just basically lock into a half second exposure. Whereas if you go to the long exposure time lapse, you can actually indicate. But the things that you do is you indicate how long you want to record for. So let's say two hours. And you can specify how long you want your final video to be. And then it'll figure out how many photos to take. You can also use this swing range and it'll slowly swing one way or the other. So if I do this, it'll just pan one direction. If I do a swing count of two, it'll pan back. And you can do more with that. Let's take a look at what you can do with the regular time lapse. I purposely saved this for last. It's the polar clock utility. This allows you to get precise polar alignment. And what's going to happen is when you're looking through the polar alignment scope, Polaris doesn't necessarily need to be centered because Polaris is not at true north. So this utility lets you figure out where in the scope's markings, and you'll see those in a second, Polaris should be aligned. So I would basically use my, declin my uh, azimuth and latitude knobs to slowly tweak the unit until Polaris is right here in the scope. Let's take a look at how to install the scope and how to get started with polar alignment.
Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you've learned about the Star Adventure Mini if you've been considering it. Maybe this will help you decide. And if you have one, but we're struggling with maybe how to configure it or do certain things, I hope this helped you out. If you have feedback, comments, suggestions, tips, uh, questions, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, I wish you clear skies.